Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at what we call an isolated sphere capacitor. Now, typically, a capacitor has two plates. It could be a cylinder, an inner and an outer cylinder. It could be an inner and outer sphere. It could be two parallel plates. But what about a single sphere? Can that be a capacitor? And the answer is yes, it can be. We can store charge on that, and therefore we'll have an electric field outside, which means there'll be a potential difference when we go, let's say, from A to B or from B to A. And so therefore we can actually calculate the capacitance of an isolated sphere like that. So let's do that. Again, the electric field outside will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times Q over R squared. And if we then want to find the potential difference going from B to A, we can say that the potential difference, the delta V, going from B to A is equal to V, which is equal to integral of all the dVs. And of course, we start with the equation that dV is equal to E times dr by the definition of the electric field. The electric field by definition is voltage over distance, but if it's a varying electric field, we have to write it as a differential equation like that. So then the dv is going to become the integral of E dr, and let me write it like that. And so the integral would be from, let's say, going from B to A. B to A. So we want to see what the potential difference is moving from B to A, which will be by definition be put into our equation right here. So just a moment. And plugging in what the E is equal to, oh, and I do need a negative sign there. Again, the reason why I need a negative sign is notice as R gets bigger, the potential gets smaller. As we get closer, as R gets smaller, potential gets bigger. That's why we need the negative sign to compensate for that. Plugging in what E is equal to and moving the constants out. So this is equal to minus Q over four pi epsilon sub naught times the integral of 1 over r squared dr going from b to a. All right. Now, to, in order to, to integrate that a little bit easier, let's write in this form. The potential is equal to minus q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the integral of r to the minus 2 dr going from b to a. Writing it like that just makes it easier to integrate. Now, all I have to do is add one to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so this is equal to minus q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times r to the minus 1 over the new exponent minus 1 going from b to a. And notice that this minus 1 will cancel out that minus 1. So we can say that the potential is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity 1 over r evaluated from b to a. Now we can plug in our limits and see what we get. So this is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over A minus 1 over B. Now notice that when we go from B to A, the potential should increase. Is that indeed the case here? Well, if B is a bigger number, 1 divided by B must be smaller than 1 divided by A. So therefore, a bigger number minus a small number is a positive quantity, which means that, yes, when we go from B, B to A, we do get a positive potential difference. All right, now we can go ahead and plug that in here and see what we get. And maybe, just to make it a little bit easier, let's write it slightly different. We can write this as Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the quantity B minus A over A times B. So in other words, if we add them together, put them over common denominator A times B, that would be the quantity right there. All right. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to take this form. There's a reason why, and I'll show you in just a moment why. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at our physical capacitor right here. What happens if we move A and move it to the surface of the capacitor? That means that A now becomes equal to the radius of the capacitor, and let's take B and move it out to infinity where the potential is equal to zero. If we do that, our potential difference going from infinity to the surface of the sphere, because after all, we shouldn't define it as two arbitrary points away from the sphere. We should define it in, a, in terms of some number where we can go out to infinity, where we know the potential is zero, and to the surface of the capacitor. So if we do that, then we have Q divided by four pi epsilon sub naught, times, instead of A, we're going to write 1 over R, and instead of B, it's 1 over infinity. And of course, 1 over infinity 
that becomes zero. And so now we can say that the potential on the surface of the capacitor, V, will now be equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon sub naught times R. Now we go ahead and plug this quantity in for the potential right there. So now when we come over here, we can say that capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the charge divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the radius. The Q's cancel out and we end up with simply 4 pi epsilon sub naught times R. Or let me write it again over here. The capacitance of a isolated sphere capacitor is simply 4 pi epsilon sub naught times the radius of the capacitor. And there you go. That's the capacitance of an isolated sphere. That's how we do that.